there's a battle going on in Bakhmut that is now in its seventh month. Both sides have lost overwhelming amounts of, of soldiers. It has really been uh, a slugfest, and it has, there has been much movement on the ground. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, we've had another high-profile situation where the Russian government has detained an American. What can you tell us about this, and how has the Biden administration responded? So uh, earlier this week, the Russian FSB arrested Wall Street Journal reporter uh, Evan um, Gershkovich. And so they accused him not of having broken any of their uh, laws that sort of are against the press, right. but they've actually accused him, <coughs> excuse me, of espionage. Right. And so this is a charge that carries significant weight in Russia. Mm -hmm. And so we've already heard even, you know, in the, in the short hours after his arrest happened, we heard the Wall Street Journal come out and vehemently deny any any allegations that he's a spy. We've heard from the uh, Biden administration that uh, they're very concerned with his arrest. Uh, and we've heard from the State Department that they're in touch with their Russian counterparts over this. Uh, but it's still very early, and it's too early to tell exactly how this will play out. Uh, but there are a lot of comparisons uh, to some of the other Americans who have been, uh, as the Biden administration would say, wrongfully detained. Now, it's even too early for the administration to make a judgment on that, and this is, uh, that's a legal judgment that the State Department conducts, so uh, right. it'll take some time for them to sort out exactly what's gone on, what he's accused of, uh, if there's any evidence. Uh, but we've already heard the White House say they're concerned, uh, and the Wall Street Journal deny you know, any allegations, and we already know that he has uh, pleaded not guilty to the crimes, uh, but he's facing a 20-year prison sentence. You know, obviously this isn't an unfamiliar situation. We've had Brittany Griner who was the subject of a very high profile uh, prisoner exchange. Uh, we have Paul Whelan who's been in Russian custody for some time now and there's a lot of concern about how any other person being apprehended might affect sort of the, the trade capital for him. Uh, this, this is not new though for the Biden administration. They, they have been through this before. Yes, they have. So as you mentioned, uh, over the last year or so, they've actually conducted two prisoner swaps mm -hmm. uh, with the Kremlin. The first got them back, Trevor Reed, uh, who was a former Marine accused of assaulting a police officer. Mm -hmm. And then they got back Brittany Griner, uh, who was charged uh, with drug possession. Uh, both uh, They were able to get both of them back, but in each deal they were not able to get Paul Whelan back, as you mentioned, who coincidentally enough also faced espionage charges. He, a couple years ago, was sentenced to 16 years in prison uh, and is going through serving that sentence right now even as the administration believes he's wrongfully detained and is trying to get him back. Uh, but when we heard, uh, or when the Griner deal was announced, we heard from administration officials say that they view Wheel indifferently because of this espionage charge, which is not a great sign moving forward. So obviously all of this is ha happening against the backdrop of Russia's war in Ukraine, where clearly the United States is leading the Western charge against this invasion, trying to isolate Russia. Russia may view detaining Americans as a form of capital that it can somehow exploit. Where are we right now in terms of the war in Ukraine, the real major offensive in Bakhmut? Great question. For Bakhmut, uh, as we've talked about a lot over the last couple of weeks, there's a battle going on in Bakhmut that is now in its seventh month. Both sides have lost overwhelming amounts of, of soldiers. It has really been uh, a slugfest, and it has, there has been much movement on the ground. Despite that, we've, heard, we've seen Ukrainian forces hold strong in the center of the city, uh, and Russian forces, which are led by the Wagner Group, uh, which is a paramilitary group, uh, have actually struggled as they've gotten closer to the center of the city. The Ukrainian forces have been stronger, closer within. And so we heard President Zelensky earlier this week uh, say he believes the, the, complete, the entire war hinges on the Battle of Bakhmut uh, because in his, in his point of view, uh, the Ukrainian people may not be willing to go through uh, a protracted war uh, following a loss in Bakhmut. So to him, uh, Winning in Bakhmut ensures that the Ukrainians continue to have the will to push back against Russian aggression uh, mm -hmm. and not go to the diplomatic uh, table. The United States has made a, a pretty strong allegation against Russia. I mean, obviously, there have been a number of allegations, but in terms of what they might be seeking from another country to aid the Ukraine war effort, 
the Biden admin, administration earlier this week uh, said they uncovered uh, and then declassified, which is why we know, now know about it, new intelligence to indicate that Russia is actively trying to get munitions from North Korea. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard in the past that North Korea uh, has provided uh, munitions to the, the Wagner Group, uh, but this is, according to the administration, uh, a new a new deal, and we heard from administration officials earlier today uh, and from the Treasury Department that they've actually sanctioned uh, one individual who uh, they say is responsible for trying to broker this deal, uh, which would have resulted in Russia getting up to as many as uh, two dozen different types of weapons from the North Koreans in exchange for food even. Closer to home, <coughs> Senator Tommy Tuberville, a Republican from Alabama, has raised some concerns with the Pentagon by a tactic he is using to protest the Department of Defense's new policy, post-Dobbs policy, on abortion. What's the controversy there and what is, is Senator Tuberville trying to do? Great question. So as you mentioned, the, the whole uh, situation sort of comes down to the DOD uh, uh, policy on abortion. Now they don't fund abortion, but since Roe v. Wade was overturned, uh, Secretary Austin has come down with policies uh, that essentially provide, uh, ex essentially allow service members to get reimbursed for travel uh, should they need to go out of state to get an abortion uh, if they're stationed somewhere where abortion is not legal or it's not, they're not, it's not available to them. Mm -hmm. Now this policy has raised significant consternation am among conservatives uh, who say that this is in violation of the Hyde Amendment that, you know, taxpayer dollars shouldn't be going to abortions uh, or any aspect of getting an abortion. Mm -hmm. And so Senator Tuberville is, uphold, er, is withholding and preventing Pentagon nominations from going through, uh, through the Senate. And so he's uh, stopped up about 160 uh, nominations or confirmations, uh, promotions, and within. And so... Uh, DOD officials were on Capitol Hill this week. Uh, they even, you know, some of them even appeared in front of Senator Tuberville on his committees. Right. Uh, and there was a little back and forth uh, about uh, DOD officials essentially uh, standing by the policy and defending uh, not only the policy, uh, but arguing that Senator Tuberville's actions are, you know, endangering the country. They're, uh, you know, they're preventing national security efforts from moving forward, given that some of the uh, nominations are preventing our high high level officials. Uh, that being said, Senator Tuberville's office was quick to point out that you know there are workarounds to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. and it just requires a lot more time and effort. Mm -hmm. So that's not the only dust up between the Pentagon and Republican senators this week. Uh, one Republican senator, in particular, made a, a, a fairly serious allegation. You're right. So Senator uh, Tom Cotton from Arkansas. Uh, a veteran himself, accused mm -hmm. the department of actually withholding information regarding last week's uh, strikes in Syria. To back up a little bit, uh, U.S. officials, uh, or DOD officials, uh, knew that a strike had occurred against a U.S. Uh, base in Syria last mm -hmm. Thursday. Out, a couple hours later, uh, both the head of CENTCOM, uh, Secretary Austin, and General Milley all appeared uh, on Capitol Hill, though, at different committees. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until that night, after the U.S. had retaliated, that military officials notified Congress. And so Senator uh, Cotton essentially alleged that DOD intentionally withheld the information at the time when they knew that uh, there would be high-ranking DOD officials on Capitol Hill who could face questioning about it, uh, in addition to the fact that Congress, er, the Senate that day were, was hearing amendments regarding uh, the war authorizations that they've now since rescinded, mm -hmm. uh, dating back to 1991 and 2002. And so, uh, again, Senator Cotton accused DOD officials of withholding this information just long enough for uh, what he said were these votes to go the way DOD wanted. Now, obviously, uh, DOD denied that there was any malicious intent, but Secretary Austin did it acknowledge that they should have done a better job at informing them sooner. Because obviously that kind of activity in Syria, it could be seen as related to some of the war powers being discussed when they were repealing the AUMFs for both the Iraq War and the uh, first Persian Gulf War in the early 90s. Exactly. And so uh, there were amendments uh, that were debated on that, you know, discuss uh, the level of force that's going on right now in Iraq and Syria uh, and how 
uh, DOD should be allowed to engage with and without uh, the war authorization. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.